sojourners. Um, we're going to begin with Tom Frank. Uh, talk about the state of this country. First, respond to what President Obama said yesterday, and contrast that with his actual actions, what has been approved with the budget that has been presented, the so-called compromise. Okay. And how are you today, Amy? It's good to be with you. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I was actually, um, you know, I'm, I'm very liberal, as you know, and I was kind of pleased by what President Obama said yesterday, that he was finally, you know, going to take a stand against the sort of uh, conservative onslaught of the last few years. You know, that was, that was very gratifying to me, that he's going to defend uh, Medicare and Medicaid, and, and that he actually, you know, gave a kind of uh, philosophical defense of of uh, you know of 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 the sort of uh, liberal welfare state, which people like me have been waiting for him to do for for quite a while, and that was very heartening. Now, the problem with this conversation that we've been having is that, as you know, I mean, over the over the years, President Obama says all kinds of wonderful things. The man is a you know he's a spellbinder uh, in terms of of oratory. He's a, he's a he's a, one of the greatest speakers I've ever seen, but the the actions don't always measure up, you know. He's, uh, he's, he's, he seems to be very willing to compromise with, uh, the, with the, the, the right wing of the Republican Party and to give them everything they want, you know, when, when the deals are being made. And we saw, uh, we saw a sort of uh, a very disheartening version of that um, last week on the budget compromise. But I'll tell you what, I still think that, that the president's rhetoric could change the game if he went a little bit further, if he actually, and this is what I think he really needs to do, spell out to the American people how we got here in the first place. I mean, the reason we're having these, uh, the, this budget crisis is because we were deliberately driven into budget crisis by the last administration. You remember, these are people that started two wars and cut taxes at the same time, set up a, you know, a, a brand new prescription drug benefit and didn't, you know, come up with any way of paying for it. They were just heaping up expenses, meanwhile, outsourcing the entire government in this very expensive manner, uh, you know, and cutting taxes on the wealthy deliberately, you know, defunding the liberal state, deliberately bringing on the train wreck. These guys have spent, the, the conservative movement, that is, have spent, you know, basically have spent decades trying to run the government into the wall. And they've succeeded. And now they come out and tell us that we have to, you know, we have to cut these, uh, these, these uh, the, the programs that, they, that they've been against all this time. He should, he should, he should expose this sort of uh, card game to the public for what it is. But, uh, Tom, how do you reconcile, as you say, the rhetoric of the president, including his his uh, passionate defense of Social Security and Medicare, with the reports that keep coming out that the administration is, uh, at some point, going to uh, require major changes uh, in entitlements, that there seems to be a public—a public, uh, a, a public um, uh, perception or, or that the administration is pushing, and then there is the private negotiations that continue to go on over how yeah. uh, the administration is going to rein in what they what many claim, especially among conservatives, is the crisis of Social Security yeah. and Medicare. Yeah, and it's not just uh, private, by the way. I mean, he did set up that uh, uh, the, the 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 what is it the, the the deficit reduction commission who came out with all kinds of uh, you know of, of recommendations along the, the very lines that you just described, and it was all done. You know, that was all uh, uh, pretty much public. And uh, Obama is probably going to, in my view, is probably going to come around and embrace a lot of that stuff as some kind of compromise. How do I explain it? This is what this is what I'm really sorry to break this to you. This is what Democrats do here in this town. I mean, they continually cave. Um, I mean, they, they I like President Obama. You know, I voted for him. Uh, hell, I voted for Bill Clinton, too. And they, they always disappoint you in the end. I mean, this is this is the, the power dynamics of this town. You have one party that has this kind of um, uh, this very businesslike quality to it, this this sort of a, a message discipline to it, and if you go over to one of the other, they even have their own, you know, uh, uh, cable broadcasting channel that's watched by millions of people. That's giving a sort of party line, and then you have this other party that's just that's that's this sort of confused and wandering and doesn't really feel, uh, you know, that, that's 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 come completely disconnected from the popular movement that, that that built it up in the first place. And the only thing it really, the only force that it really answers to is the same 
same one as the other party, which is uh, campaign donors. I mean, this is the, the, the sort of the, the, the Democratic Party is, you know, there's a lot of good Democrats in the world, of course, but it's a, I mean, your previous guest is a guy that I particularly admire, but you know, it, it, it's a it's a really disappointing, uh, disheartening story. I'm very sorry. To